Hey, I'm Chris, and today we're going to assess a septic patient. Hey, how's it going? Hey, going good. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm Cameron, I'm the nurse here, and this is Alice. Hi, Alice. Um, and she, her symptoms have just been getting worse since last night, so we figured we'd just bring you guys in to come take a check at her. Okay, cool, thanks. Hey, Alice, I'm Chris, I'm a paramedic. Can you tell me what's going on today? I just don't feel good. Okay, how long has that been going on for? I don't know. Okay, I've got a couple silly questions for you, okay? Can you tell me your full name? Alice Smith. Okay, how old are you, Alice? My birthday's January 12th. Okay, do you know what year? No. No, and you don't know how old you are? Okay, uh, can you tell me where we are right now? No? Okay, and another silly question for you. Can you tell me who the president is? Um, no. No? Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna listen to your lung sounds here real quick, okay? Okay. So you're just gonna sit there and breathe normally while I listen here, okay? Have you had any trouble breathing recently? No. No? Okay. Deep breaths for me. Good. Over here, deep breaths. So walking into the room, my general impression is that I have an elderly female patient. She's laying in bed. Uh, she seems pretty lethargic. Uh, and as I check her orientation, she's also confused as well. Uh, I have a staff member on scene who's able to help answer some questions and he reports that she's had some worsening symptoms over the last night. So I need to delve in and see what those symptoms are. Checking her ABCs, she's able to talk to me so I can assess that her airway is open and clear. Uh, I checked her lung sounds, which sound clear. She doesn't have any obvious uh, increased work at breathing or anything, even though her breathing rate does seem a little bit fast. Uh, and then checking her pulse. Her pulse was pretty fast and very weak, which is obviously a concern for us. And touching her skin, as you saw, I noticed uh, her skin was very, very warm to the touch. Okay. All right, my partner here is gonna grab some vital signs on you, okay? Okay. So my partner was able to get some vital signs for us there, and there are a couple things that are making me concerned that the patient is in a state of shock. Firstly, her heart rate is a little elevated, which is usually a sign of compensatory shock uh, and possibly decompensated shock as well. And she's borderline hypotensive. Uh, I don't have any suspicion to think that she would normally sit with her blood pressure that low. So between everything we've found so far that she's lethargic, she's a little confused, she has a high heart rate with a borderline low blood pressure, makes me concerned uh, that she is from going from compensated shock possibly into decompensated shock. Because remember, that's usually where we start to see those changes in blood pressures are in decompensated shock. So looking at her and um, looking at her skin signs, I also found that her skin was hot to the touch. So that makes me concerned for temperature. We check the temperature and her temperature is elevated as well. So if I'm already thinking shock, now I have an elevated temperature. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe septic shock and I'm going to be leading my questions down the septic shock line as I'm asking questions of the patient and the caregiver that's there with her. Okay, Alice, I have some more questions for you, okay? Do you have any allergies that you know of? No. Well, that's okay, I'll ask Cameron, okay? Um, do you guys know if she have any allergies? Yeah, just uh, aspirin. Okay. How about uh, medications? Anything she takes currently? Um, we have a medication list I can give to you guys. Okay, perfect. Uh, how about past medical history? What does she have for that? Um, she has type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, okay. um, blood clots, okay. and then uh, um, she's also had bladder issues that led to a urinary catheter. Okay. Um, about how long has she had the urinary catheter in for? About a week. Okay. Okay, good. Um, do you know the last thing she had to eat or drink? Um, just last night, about just some soup, okay. and hasn't eaten anything since. Okay. Um, and was she just not able to eat this morning? Or you guys tried to feed her, she wasn't up for it? Yeah, she just wasn't feeling up for it and just really fatigued. Okay, um, and then just to, just to recap kind of what's going on. So you guys called us out because she's not feeling well today. Uh, when did you guys notice that she wasn't feeling very well? 
Um, last night on night shift, they started reporting that she was getting you know, a bit more lethargic, okay. um, a bit more fatigued. Okay. And normally, would she be able to answer my questions that I'm yeah. asking her? Yeah. Normally, I was super outgoing, really talkative, really love to socialize. So yeah, um, just definitely been a little bit more confused lately, uh, and it's been a little bit harder for her to communicate. Okay. Um, and normally, is she ambulatory? She gets up, goes to the bathroom herself, those yeah. kind of things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was our sample history. As you saw, the patient was unable to give us uh, that good information that we needed due to her confusion. And this is something that happens sometimes where your patient is not a reliable historian. Thankfully for us, we are at a facility that has a caregiver that can answer those questions for us. So the big takeaways that I have from this are one that she's uh, diabetic, so we need to ask about that because that can cause confusion like we're seeing here. Uh, and the big change she has had recently based off of her medical history that we get is a urinary catheter. And so when we hear urinary catheter, we are already thinking possible sepsis. Those two things should really uh, prick our ears up to be thinking about a possible urinary tract infection or something to do with that, uh, that urinary catheter leading to the sepsis. Mm -hmm. That urinary catheter, you mm -hmm. said it's been in for about a week. Yeah. Um, have you guys changed it today? Did you notice any cloudy urine? Any abnormal smells or anything? Yes, uh, foul smell, cloudy, dark, okay. dark color. And do we know about how long that's been going on for? Um, it's just probably, you know, last night into this morning. Okay, okay, good. Uh, you feel pretty warm, Alice. I think maybe we have an infection going on, okay? Um, but I do have a couple other things I want to do, other questions I want to check, okay? You haven't had any alcohol today that you know of? No, and, uh, no. and that's all controlled, right? She doesn't yeah. have access to anything like that? Correct. Okay, and she doesn't have a, he's, a history of seizures? Nope, no seizures. No, you guys didn't see any seizure history or anything? Nope. Sorry, any seizures today? Uh, nope, no, nope. not today. Okay. Um, and her medication, she's taking those all as prescribed, like she normally would? Correct, yep, the staff administers her medication, okay. so. Okay, perfect. Um, any kidney issues that we know of? No. No, okay. Um, any falls? Any sort of traumatic injuries that we know, falls out of bed, anything like that? Nope, not at all. No, okay. And you said she's diabetic? Correct. Yeah, but she's usually pretty well managed with her diabetes. Yep, so um, we, we still administer that as well and help her out there with those. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, any recent life events that you know that maybe could be um, kind of weighing on her pretty heavily that we know of? No. No, okay. Hey, Alice, I'm going to ask you to do a couple things for me now, okay? Can you give me a big smile when you see your teeth? Good, good. Lift your eyebrows up real big. Scrunch them down really tight. Good. Um, we're also going to have you take your hands, put them out like this, like you're holding a pizza box. Both perfect. Leave them there. Don't let them fall down. Okay, good. You can put those down. And then real quick, I want you to repeat after me, okay? Tell me that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Okay, good. And how are you feeling? You said not feeling very good. Are you just feeling weak, tired? Cold and cold, tired. Cold and tired. Okay, are you dizzy at all? No. Any pain anywhere? I don't know. No? You don't know? Okay. Um, and you said no trouble breathing or anything? No. Have you had a cough at all? No. No? Okay. No coughs or anything that you guys have noticed? No respiratory stuff? I mean, yeah, it's like coughs here and there, but yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay. Nothing concerning. It's nope. abnormal. Yeah. Okay. All right, Alice. Well, I think we need to take you down to the hospital. I think maybe you have a urinary tract infection that you need to get treated for, okay? And I think maybe that's what, what's making you feel so, so tired and so just weak, okay? okay. So my partner's going to bring the gurney over here. We'll do a little dance, get you stood up, see if we can get you on the gurney. We'll get you down to the hospital, okay? Okay. So that was uh, some secondary assessment questions we were asking for this patient. As I said before, my main suspicion based off of what we had found before the secondary assessment was going to be a urinary tract infection leading to sepsis. But I still have a confused patient that has some sort of issue with their neurological system, so I want to ask a lot of questions based off of that. I really like the AEIOU TIPS mnemonic if we're going to be looking at the neurological system, uh, just because it's a good rule in, rule out, things like alcohol, where we don't suspect this patient in an assisted living facility to be drinking alcohol, especially in the morning, but we still need to ask all those questions so that we can rule things in or rule things out. Uh, we also did a real quick fast stroke assessment just to rule that out. Uh, and at the end of asking those questions, uh, it was seemingly more that is going to just be that urinary tract infection due to the urinary catheter. And if you remember, uh, the urinary catheters, that leads uh, to a high possibility of, sep of sepsis for patients, especially if those, they have those in for a prolonged period of time. 
Um, so things that I was also asking about the urinary catheter, the smell of the urine, if it was cloudy or there was any debris in the urine. Uh, normally a non-catheterized patient, we'd also want to be asking about frequency of urination or if there's any painful urination. Those are all signs and symptoms uh, that we will see with a patient who has a UTI. And then just to cover our bases, ask some simple questions as well, like if the patient has any chest pain, any shortness of breath. It's not uncommon to see these patients to have a slightly elevated respiratory rate just because they're a little bit acidic and so they're trying to burn or blow off some of that acidity, um, which was the case with Alice here. But we do want to ask some other basic questions just to rule everything out so we can make sure that we're making uh, the right decision on our treatment plan uh, and our transport plan. General Hospital, Medic 1-5. Uh, General Hospital, go ahead, Medic 1-5. General Hospital, Medic 1-5 is en route with a conscious and confused 71, 71-year-old female patient chief complaint today is going to be lethargy, possible sepsis secondary to a urinary tract infection. Last set of vital signs, we have a heart rate of 128, blood pressure of 92 over 40, respiratory rate of 20, SpO2 is 99% on room air, blood sugar is within normal range, we have a temperature of 101.7. Uh, we will see you guys in about 10 minutes. Any questions? No questions. See you in 10. That was an assessment of Alice, a septic patient. Thanks for watching. Make sure to look around our YouTube channel. We have a lot of other videos of similar medical assessments like this. We'd love if you can subscribe as well. If you have any comments about other videos you would like to see or other questions you may have, go ahead and submit that as well. Check us out at IdahoMedicalAcademy.com. Thank you.